Hello. Hello, Spellbook. Zach! <laughs> How you guys doing, man? You guys Greetings. Are... <laughs> Greetings, yes. You guys are live right now on the Zach Moonshine Show with Metal Devastation Radio. How are you guys doing, man? Trying to get drunk at the moment. I'm about uh, four beers deep. Fuck yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So, uh, so, so, tell us, man. Fucking uh, this this new record is fucking smoking badass, dude. I love it, man. Tell us about it. Thanks, brother. Um, uh, new album. It's called Magic and Mischief. It's coming out September 25th on Cruz del Sur Music. Uh, we recorded it down in uh, Baltimore at a Developing Nations uh, Studios. Um, this is the best sounding record we have yet, uh, to be honest. Uh, it's the best uh, quality album we have yet to put out. And uh, we're really super proud of it. It's got a lot of different sounds to it. There's some doomy shit. There's some straight up rock and roll shit. You know, there's some acoustic shit. It's all over the place, man. Hell yeah, man. So uh, so how long have you guys been doing this, and exactly how did you get started? Well, we started this band, uh, what, 14? 13, 14 years ago. You know, we we started under the name Witch Hazel. We were known as Witch Hazel for ever, basically. We just recently changed the name to Spellbook. Um, you know, it started out, we were all in, uh, you know, local metal bands, and uh, decided to start this project for our mutual love of, you know, 70s rock and roll. You know, um, Sabbath, Deep Purple, Zeppelin, Blue Oyster Cult, Kiss, you know, all that shit. And um, out of all our projects, like, this is the one that really started taking off and uh, has yet to die. And it just, um, this is our, what, fourth, fourth record, uh, official record. Um, but this is actually the first one under the name Spellbook. So we've been at it for a while, man, and uh, we're super happy uh, the, the attention uh, we're finally getting. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, I, I was going to say, man, uh, speaking of those influences, dude, I can definitely feel it, man. You guys are fucking nailing it with uh, the sound. It, this record, Fuck definitely, yeah. it, it definitely sounds like it was recorded in the 70s, and that's really cool. Well, the thing about that is... Uh, developing nation studios um it was our first time working with uh kevin bernstein and uh the cool thing with him is at his studio he has just a plethora of vintage gear and he doesn't fuck around with you know digital uh what's the drum shit uh yeah, like no trigger you know? no tr no drum triggers no natural. no you know synthetic <laughs> sounds or whatever um, so we had our pick of just like retro gear and it's all natural sounds. We even tuned the drums to every key that the song, that each song is in, which I've never heard of. We never did before. And we really took our time in picking out, uh, each tone and uh, sound for this record. And I think it paid off. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Well, I know there's a lot of gearheads out there listening. Can you uh, give them like a little rundown of some of the some of the gear that you guys used in the recording of this? I know for guitars, um, we used uh, mainly two different heads. We used, uh, I think, a 1975 Marshall. Um, I don't know the exact model. You know, I'm I'm just the singer. I just Hey, that one sounds cool. Let's use that. Um, but we used that. I think someone said, like, this is what, like, ACDC used to do, use back in the day, back in the 70s. And uh, another head we used for guitar was uh, the, the Marlin. It was a Marlin. Yeah, yeah. It was like a, I think it was like a Japanese ripoff of a Marshall, basically, from back in the day. I never heard of it, but we were getting the, the cleanest tones out of that shit. So we decided to do that. And, um, we used uh, Nick, our drummer's actual drum kit, which is Gretsch USA Custom. USA Custom Gretsch for drums. Um, I mean, that's basically on it. Do you remember your, your bass rig? Yeah, it was a vintage, like, 60s Ampeg SVT. Vintage Ampeg SVT. <laughs> so, yeah. I just sing in a microphone. That's all I do. <laughs> nice. So uh, so tell us uh I mean uh, obviously uh your influences are uh 
a lot of a lot of the bands that you just mentioned and um but coming into it like well growing up what what kind of what kind of stuff really got you into to doing what you do now was it always was it always this yeah. or or did you did you kind of morph well um me personally uh some of my first memories as a child is leafing through my parents vinyls yeah didn't know what they were and just coming across um kiss destroyer and kiss alive and not knowing what the fuck i was looking at um it wasn't a couple years you know later that i oh this is music and you can put this on this machine and play it so i got i was obsessed with kiss as a kid that was my first love and as i grew older you know started getting into more punk stuff like misfits and eventually full-blown metalhead you know thrash metal metallica Megadeth, Anthrax, Slayer, then that snowballed into death metal, Cannibal Corpse, and that snowballed into black metal, power metal. I was a sponge for fucking all things metal. Um, I was My first band was uh, a black metal slash thrash metal band. Uh, then I sang for just a straight up old school thrash metal band after that. Um, but rock and roll was always, that, that was the first thing. You know, Kiss was it for me. Um, same with like Black Sabbath and Alice Cooper and shit like that. Um, Nick, what do you think? Uh, definitely since nine years old, uh, Ozzy Osbourne or As for the Wicked was the first cassette I ever purchased with my lunch money that I did not use <laughs> at school. And uh, it, my brother's like, oh, Ozzy, well, you know he's in his band Black Sabbath. And it's like, that's my life right there. Um, and then it became an obsession. It was, it was Black Sabbath Metallica as a kid, but then once I realized, like, wow, this shit was going on in 1969, 1970, 71, like, Volume 4, arguably one of the heaviest records of all time, 1972, and I was just fascinated by that, and I was like, I wonder what else was going on in that time period. Like, of course, the new Led Zeppelin and that shit, but I was fascinated, like, was there anything else, like, quite this heavy around, and, and that's when I got crazy into the late 60s, 70s, obscure shit, um, uh, you know, more obscure, uh, the Captain Beyond, the Leaf Hound, the May Blitz, all that stuff, okay. and avid vinyl collector, so, so that's where, that's where my headspace is at. Atomic Rooster. Atomic Rooster. <laughs> <laughs> See? Yeah, kind of the same for me. Um, my father was a drummer in a band in the 60s, so I grew up around, uh, just rock and roll, you know, listening to the radio, and, uh, all the, all the albums and vinyls he had playing pretty much all the time and just grew up around classic rock really um and that's kind of from there i got went through a couple different phases got into the 90s stuff for a while got into grindcore some death metal of course thrash you know when metallic was getting big all that stuff uh eventually got into stoner rock when it started to get some grounding because i thought well this sounds a lot like the classic rock stuff that i was into when i was growing up and uh yeah, so it's kind of kind of the same. We all uh, have a little different influences later on, but we all kind of grew up the same way. Hell yeah, man! Now I got I gotta ask you about this album cover, man. This fucking the album art is fucking awesome on this thing, dude. Tell us about it. Is there Super sick. Uh, yeah, it was it was done by a guy named Chad Keith. Um, I believe he's out in California. I found this guy. Um, through a podcast I listened to called Say You Love Satan Podcast. <laughs> nice. And, uh, yeah, it's fucking rad. It's uh, about it's an 80s horror movie podcast. I love them. They're out of Philly. Shout out to Say You Love Satan. Um, but they found this guy, and uh, he did some T-shirt artwork for them. And I was like, man, that's such a cool style that – if we were to use this guy, it would set us apart from what everyone else is doing. Like it would, it just seemed like it would catch people's eyes a little more than like what other people are using these days. Um, so yeah, basically the concept was um, picking an object to represent each song on the record and uh, just incorporating it, incorporating it into one big album cover. So like every little piece of thing you see on the album cover represents a song on the album. That is fucking cool, man. 
Yeah, that is really cool. Yeah, yeah. when I'm looking at it, it definitely uh, takes me back to uh, going to the fucking video store and checking out all the fucking horror movies and stuff. You know, 100%. Well, yeah, dude. And I think, like, Chad, um, his main thing is uh, he does, you know, movie posters and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So, like, and I was like, that's well, totally what we were looking for. And, uh, yeah, he, he fucking nailed it, man. Like, we couldn't be happier. Yeah, man, I love that stuff. Uh, tell us about the songs on this record, uh, some of the themes that you guys have going on in these, and the lyrics and stuff. Well, that's kind of all over the place. Um, you know, we named the album Magic and Mischief because uh, we kind of delve both uh, in those categories lyrically. Some of the songs like Wants to the Sky, Ominous Skies, Amulet, um, it's very like fantasy based, um, very like magical occult kind of stuff. Um, but then there's there's other tracks, you know, like Black Shadow, Not Long for This World, um, that deal more with like real life um, situations and emotions. And um, you know, that's kind of what we've always been. Uh, there's never really been a rule of what songs should be about you know um we do delve in like the magical and mystery kind of shit you know a lot and like we love that shit um but then there's also songs that are more down to like real life emotion stuff and uh day-to-day um struggle kind of stuff so it, it really varies and um i'm the kind of guy where it's like i i really don't like the songs to be told to me like what they are specifically about like i want the listener to interpret what the lyrics are to whatever they need them to be you know that's what i like about songs and music and lyrics and shit like that so it's kind of all over the place hell yeah man hell yeah Uh, i got some questions for you rolling in from the chat room uh let me see here oh god here we go Uh, J J M C T says you mentioned Alice Cooper. What's your favorite Cooper album? Oh my god! All right, well, mine is um, "Welcome to My Nightmare." Hell yeah! Okay, Alice Cooper group. Yes, bitch. Come uh, on. I'm gonna go. Man, I'm gonna go the height of it. Billion Dollar Babies solo, definitely. Welcome to My Nightmare, though. Fuck yeah! Man. We got Steve. Steve's got goes to hell. (laughs) Pretty's for you, motherfucker. (laughs) Another question. uh, uh, Well, what's your favorite horror movies? Oh, yeah. Shit, man. Um, The Thing. Oh, you asshole. (laughs) Seabrook says The Thing. My all-time, all-time franchise is A Nightmare on Elm Street. Love that shit. I'm a Freddy Krueger freak. Hell yeah. Um, honorable, honorable mention, there's a film from 2006 called Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Love that shit. Not a lot of people know about it. Check it out. I'm going to go with uh, Phantasm. You motherfucker. That's a good one. <laughs> Hell yeah. Another question. Uh, Vicky wants to know, where is one place that you've played at that's your favorite? Our stomping ground has been a place called The Depot in York, PA. Um, it's no longer around, but that's really where we cut our teeth um, playing live. Um, that's, uh, like I said, our stomping ground. What's up? I'd say, yeah, since uh, we're not doing bands there anymore, it would be uh, the Chameleon Club in uh, Lancaster. Chameleon Club's our new uh, home. Yes, yeah. definitely. Always good to us there. Another question, uh, Lady Red wants to know, what's one of the craziest memories while doing a show? <laughs> oh, God. I got one. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> uh, definitely getting a little bit uh, too inebriated before a show and being the last band, which is not something we prefer. We like to usually play first or second. And enjoy the rest of the evening. But uh, we played last, and uh, having the rest of the guys basically have to set my drum set up for me because I was too drunk to even stand up. <laughs> Nick uh, 
punched his grandfather on a show once. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real fucking thing that actually happened. Um, that was at a festival. Dude, it was a festival of all cover bands. Okay, we were the only original music band on the bill. And we were the first band to play, and we were playing at like 10 in the morning. First band. We get our set cut for some shit cover band. We just proceed to get hammered the rest of the day. Next thing I know, Nick's punching his grandfather. Like, I, that's all I know. <laughs> Damn, dude. <laughs> that's pretty that's a true fucking up. story. <laughs> We're trading a pretty good picture of it here. I got to ask, though. Uh, it's a long time ago. He had it coming. Hey, we all make our mistakes. He had it coming. <laughs> Now, I got to ask, though, you said you were so drunk that you, you couldn't stand up, so they had to set up your drones, but you still played? I still played. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. How, how There's did... pictures of it somewhere. <laughs> There's video. I need to see it. <laughs> nice. Um, let me see here. I got another question. Uh, speaking of being inebriated, what's your favorite booze to drink? Ham's beer. Drink we're it drinking right it right now. Ham's, we're still waiting for our goddamn... Sponsorship. Sponsorship, man. We've been pumping these guys for years. For years now. Hams, um, America's classic premium beer, born in the land of sky blue waters. Yeah. We want our residuals. <laughs> and that's a statement. Hell yeah, man. I I've never actually tried hams, but there's a funny, funny story about that. Is like back when I first started this fucking radio station. I was searching around for, like, funny little commercials and things to fucking throw in the fucking playlist and mix, you know, just to mix it up. Oh, dude, are you, you going to say the Ham's beer commercial? Yes, yes, I, I found Oh, this. my God, it's the best. <laughs> I used to it's play. It's just a dude hanging out with a fucking bear in his Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking. Ham, and it had a kick-ass jingle. Ham's yeah. is the beer, the beer you've been looking for. Hams, the beer you've been looking for. Dude, I love that shit. <laughs> Dude, that shit was badass, man. I put that on here, and like years later, I remember going to Kroger to get beer, and all of a sudden, there I see a fucking like 18 pack of fucking Hams. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Like, for like 13 fuck? bucks. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking crazy, Back man. Back when a man could just hang out with a bear, just get a vacation with a bear. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been I've been hesitant to fucking actually try it, but now that you guys are saying that it's good, I think you have uh, a four endorsement. Yeah, I think I might I might try it, man. <laughs> it's on it's on the rider. Fuck yeah, man. So, uh, oh, another question, Lady Red wants to know: Have you guys ever played in Canada? No, not yet. Um, we did we did get an offer to play somewhere in Canada. Who were we? we played with Chevy, the band Chevy. Yeah. Um, they're based out of Canada. Um, we did get offered a gig there one time, um, but at the time we just couldn't do it. But we would love to play Canada anytime. I mean, obviously, probably not going to happen anytime soon. But um, yeah, dude, we want to play everywhere. Everywhere. Hell yeah. Bad Wizard wants you to know that he would love to party with you guys. Bad, did you say Bad Wizard? Yeah, Bad Wizard. Kick-ass band oh out God, of New York. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. I think he's in Chicago, so if you guys ever uh, go down to Chicago, man, he'll have to hit you up. Well, Bad Wizard from Chicago. There's a band, Bad Wizard, from New York. Uh, they're not around anymore, but, man, they kicked ass. Three or four, uh, four records probably out. Like, check them out. Kick-ass band. Rock and roll. Hell yeah. Chicago, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> Another question uh, from the chatters, probably the most important question of the chat of the uh, interview. What do you prefer, showers or sponge baths? I've never gotten a sponge bath in my fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sponge bath, obviously. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm staring at my girlfriend right now. Uh, I need a shower. So hot to the point, I almost pass out. I bathe like that every single day. True story. See, do you ever get a fucking sponge bath? No. Nope. Yeah, who the fuck We're fucking sponge showers, baths? As Kicks would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we're fucking prudes over here, man. Showers, I guess. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, another question: Were any of you guys big fans of bands from the uh, new wave of British heavy metal? Absolutely, absolutely, one hundred percent. And you can hear a little bit of that sneaking into our sound today, um, especially with the track that you played tonight, "Wands of the Sky." Um, you can hear some of that shit, the, the proto metal stuff. Mainly uh, for me, Diamond Head, uh, fucking rules. Tires of Pantang, uh, Raven. I consider Venom a new wave of British heavy metal band. Um, yeah. I consider the first couple of Def Leppard records new wave of British heavy metal. Motorhead, Maiden Priest. Uh, what are some really good ones? Um, Black Axe. Some yeah, obscure shit. Black yeah. Axe, Quartz, Limelight, um, Moxie. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah, man. Well, uh... Another question I, I got to ask you, man. Like with the fucking pandemic, the fucking coronavirus, and everything, man. How how, how have you guys been holding up, man? How's it been affecting you guys so far? Well, zero fucking shows, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> um, you know, we uh, hunkered down for a few months. Um, we talked to each other about like, hey, like, where are you guys at? How do you feel about getting together, you know, safely and to start getting some practices back in? And, you know, we all agreed, like, we feel that we can do it safely. So we've been uh, rehearsing again for the past month and a half. Yeah, month and a half. We have, well, this band never stops writing music. So we already have the next album the blueprint in our minds right now. So we're working on new music, going over, you know, old material to keep ourselves sharp, you know, and for whenever shit opens back up, you know, we do plan on, uh, going to Europe eventually, you know, shit. whenever that happens. And, um, it had, you know, it, we did stop for a bit, but we're back, you know, keeping ourselves sharp. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, that. that's actually another question uh, asked from the chat. What's one place that you would really want to play when you're able to? Europe, anywhere overseas. Um, there was talks of a Germany tour. that We would love for that to happen. Uh, Sweden, Finland, Norway, um, you know, we we love to get overseas. This uh, thing we've never done yet, and it's been a dream of ours for a long time. Also, earlier you had a uh, you had a listener talk about Canada. Uh, we were lucky to uh, know the band Iron Man from uh, from Baltimore, Maryland. Hell yeah! And uh, became good friends with them guys. Um, Al Morris, you know what a great guy. I could go all night talking about him. And uh, his importance to this band that kept us going when we were putting out albums and nobody gave a shit. And he's like, dude, I'm telling you, you got the songs, just keep on going. Like, he literally told me that many times, many a night in front of 10 people crowds and keep it going. You guys got the songs, it's going to get noticed one day. But they always would tell us how great it is to play in Canada uh, and how great the, the, the crowds are. One of my favorite current bands, Blood Ceremony, from Canada. I would Toronto kill to play with them one day. Absolutely, yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, Canada's fucking got a fucking killer scene, dude. Like, there's been a lot of bands that I've uh, talked to from up there, and we actually have a lot of listeners in Canada. Um, they're just... Awesome. I mean, they're just uh, they're a fucking metal fucking crazy fucking bunch of motherfuckers, man. Good. And, and Pennsylvania ain't too far from Toronto. I mean... That's true. So, we would love to, you know, eventually when things clear up and it's okay and we can travel safely, you know. So, yeah, we'd love to play anywhere. Hell yeah. Uh, another question, JMC wants to know, have you ever considered doing an album on the fly, not in segments? What does that even mean? I don't even you got know. Me <laughs> I don't even know. Not in segments? Yeah, that's what he said. 
Uh, so you've talked maybe just like like live track and everything, or um, no, we've never considered that. Next question. <laughs> Well, so so the new out al- this, this album's coming out in uh, September, right? September twenty fifth. Yep. And where can they go to f- uh, where can they go to pick up a copy of this? You're gonna want to go to spellbookband.bandcamp.com or Cruise El Sur site. Oh yeah, if you're gonna order from uh, what Europe, anywhere mm-hmm. overseas, um, go to uh, Cruise Del Sur Music. Um, they can hook you up there, but if you're ordering from the states, um, help your boys out, man. Go to spellbookband.bandcamp.com. That's where you can get uh, vinyl, CDs. Um, we're gonna have more merch up in the next in the coming months, hopefully. Um, so yeah, that's where you got to go. And Bandcamp's still doing the uh, the first Fridays thing where you guys get all yes. the fucking all the all the cash. So that's what we're hearing, yeah. So if you, if, you, if you like what you hear, feel like being generous, you know, hook us up. Hell yeah, man. Well, Listen I, to our shit. <laughs> I definitely got to say, man, uh, I, I like this fucking record, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on my list to, uh, to get very soon, for sure. I'm going to have to. Thank you so much, Zach, man. We appreciate you having us on here, man. Hell yeah, man. Um. Is there anything else you want to let us know? Let your fans know? Um, we The album's going to be out in vinyl, CDs, and uh, it's coming out September 25th. We're really just pushing this new this new record. Um, next single is going to drop sometime in, in the following weeks. Um, like I said, we're already working on the next full-length record, and it's going to be a fucking banger like this one. So... Um, Hope everyone checks out Magic and Mischief by Spellbook. It's fucking the best thing we've ever done. So I think that's it. Fuck yeah, man. All right. Well, before I let you guys go, can I get you to make us a station tag? Absolutely. All right. (laughs) Whenever you're ready, say something like, this is Spellbook, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. This is Nate from Spellbook, and you are listening to Metal Devastation Radio. Ah! <laughs> that was fucking great, man. <laughs> right on, brother. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us, man. Fucking, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to blast some more Spellbook for these motherfuckers so they can go crazy, all right? Dude. Zach, Zach, real quick. Yeah. Do you get to listen to the whole record? Yes. Favorite song? Hit me. Oh fuck, man! I don't. I, you know what? It's hard to say at this point, dude. The whole fucking thing is just. No, no. I'm gonna put you on the hot seat. I need an answer. <laughs> I don't Whatever know. song he's gonna play next is fine. <laughs> Nick, have another drink. <laughs> Zach, thank you for having us. <laughs> Hell yeah, man! Thanks a lot for taking the time, guys, and. uh yeah, like I said, man, I'm going to blast some more of this shit for these motherfuckers so they can go nuts, man. Well, hopefully we'll talk to you guys soon. And uh, if you ever get back to touring, you come down to Tennessee, that's where I'm at. I'll come see you oh, guys. Oh, shit, man. yeah, man. Hot chicken rules. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you so much. Cheers, Cheers Zach. Zach. Cheers, man. Cheers. There you have it, folks. Spellbook live on the Zach Moonshine Show with Metal Devastation fucking radio. Like I said earlier, put your speakers in your fucking windows. Put them in your front lawns. Put them every fucking where, man. Crank it the fuck up. Make your fucking neighbors fucking hate you. This is Spellbook Black Shadow. Crank it up. (laughs) 